With just a little creative know-how, you can update a basic knit tee into a shirt that makes a statement. Today you're going to see that you can use a pattern with knit fabric or buy a ready-made shirt and add clever variations. Donna Fenske is back with us. She's designed these changes and is here to pass along her creativity. Donna, we're going to start with ruffles. And Nancy, ruffles are really easy to create and when applied in an asymmetrical fashion, they add even more interest. The knit ruffle can have stitching added to the edges or left alone. You have lots of choices. Knockout knit tops, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The accents during this first program concentrate on working with ruffles. Ruffles are the same fabric, or of course you can use a contrasting fabric. We're talking about knits. And Donna, a lot of the knit fabrics that you used are interlocks. Right, and we like to uh, sometimes control the stretch or even add a little finish to the edge or not. So the edge of the ruffle could just be left raw, something I would never have done 20 years ago, but is perfectly acceptable today. If you're not quite ready to leave those edges raw on your fabric, you can have a really simple way of fusing a lightweight or strip of paperback fusible web about a fourth of an inch wide, and you press it to the wrong side, and then remove the paper backing, press up the edge, and finger press will be a little tacky at this point and then just fuse. Now you need to with matching thread instead of contrasting do a little top stitching but that will give your edge a nice lightweight finish. We've done a lot of surging on the edges in the samples for today's program. Right and here I'm going to show you that you can use several surge stitches. We have a three thread or a four thread and also we're using the rolled hem a lot. On my machine I am set up for a rolled hem, but what I'm using as a thread is called, it kind of has a wooly type texture and it has a lot of stretch. And what it does, it will cover the edge of my fabric. And also I like to use a stabilizer and this is kind of a wash away stabilizer. You can either sandwich your piece um, in the stabilizer or simply lay it on top and we're simply going to surge and it's going to give me a really nice clean coverage and when I'm all done you'll have you'll have to just remove or use wa water to remove the stabilizer since it is a wash away stabilizer and it does give you a really beautiful rolled hem. But you can just tear that away right. and then just use the strip for the next piece so just it just perforates, the needle perforates the stabilizer and it tears away. So we have some edge finishes and now for creating the ruffles or the gathers. Traditional way of gathering is to stitch with a long basting stitch, two rows of basting stitches, long stitches, machine basting stitches next to each other parallel. Tie the fabric, the thread, excuse me, around a pin and then find the bobbin thread. For some unknown reason, the bobbin thread gathers more easily than the top threads and you pull them simultaneously to get even gathers. So machine basting, a long stitch, option one. On Sewing with Nancy, many times we've gathered or eased by zigzagging over a heavier cord. This is a one-stop way of doing the stitching. So from two rows, we can go to one row stitching. Again, anchor down that cord, wrap it around a pin, and just pull it, and you have more ruffles or gathers. We did two stitches, one stitch. Now this one is a no-stitch type of gathering. It's a tape that has the threads already positioned in it. And then you just, on the other side, is a fusible. The blue side has the stitches, 
The other side has the fusible. And you just press it down the middle and or wherever you'd like to put the gathers, just lightly press. And then find the blue threads. I've anchored down the opposite end. Find those threads. You have to pull them up and just pull. Now this works well on lightweight fabrics, not on heavyweight fabrics, but notice, talk about fast. That's a beautiful ruffle. Yeah, it is. A ruffler foot is our fourth option. The foot, you know, looks a little bit always like a dinosaur to me. It has lots of contraptions to it in the top. As you can see, there is a little mechanism that has a number one, a number six, and a number 12. We set it at number six because when I put the fabric through this area and I lower the foot, we simply just, with a straight stitch, it will, every six stitch, it will make a tuck. And that's what we'll use for the gathers today, making every six stitch to make great ruffles. We began the show by showing you our crossover ruffle top. And Donna, why don't you point out some of the details of this top? Basically what we have on this top is we do have like a three inch ruffle and it has the surged rolled hem on both sides, the exterior and interior. And then we have the gather line that's really close to the neckline and that's where it's been attached. Now you can use a ready-made shirt, of course you have contrasting fabric for the ruffle, or you can make it from scratch. And What you need to do is finish the neckline, yeah. of course, and the shoulder seams. To measure how long to make the ruffle, we'll start at the V-neck, stand the tape measure on its side. Go all the way around the back and to the other side of the V-neck, and then we're going about six inches down below the left armhole. Conveniently, this measures 36 inches for us, so we can do some quick math. And the ruffle is about two times the length, so you'd need at least 72 inches. I'd probably add a few extra inches just for good measure. And you're going to cut a strip that's three inches wide. Right, and also we're going to maybe quarter mark on our, our top where the ruffles are going to go. So you'll see why we need to quarter mark it because we're going to have more ruffles than shirts. So to quarter mark it at 36 inches, we have the tape measure still there, divided by four. So we would, the easiest one is to go to 18, 18. first of all. So we have a pin at 18 and then we'd have a measurement nine inches between the two, which is at 27. And then that would give us four equal sections where we could meet the ruffle. And, and there's the ruffle. Right, and the ruffle has been gathered. We also have our roll tam on both sides. And we also have pinned all of our quarter marks on our ruffle. And then we would start to gather. Now, gathering is going to be a little different with this technique because you have 72 inches or plus. Right, and I also forgot to mention, how do you join 72 inches? We also... <laughs> um, do a very flat seam. We, we do a little fusible tape and just overlap our short ends and we press them in place and that gives us a really nice flat surface to work with. Unconventional, not stitched, but it still works. It's not a right. stress seam. Right, correct. So then I tied, as I showed you earlier, the threads to a pin, around a pin, eight, figure eight around it, and that at the quarter mark, the green threads are the bobbin thread. We just pull up at the quarter mark. So we're not pulling 72 inches right. from one edge. Right. So that way you can gather from each quarter section and it really gives you a better control over your gather. So at each pin we'd pull up that bobbin thread and do the gathering. Now Donna we have a sample here and we're going to do team, right. team gathering. Yes and we have it gathered fairly well here, almost complete. But again, at the quarter marks, like you had mentioned, we mm -hmm. started to gather like in the middle of our long strip. So then we can simply uh, gather in between those mm -hmm. quarter marks and pin our quarter marks to and our I, top. And I luckily have a quarter mark just perfect here. Imagine how that happened. Yes. <laughs> and you kind of have to flatten out these ruffles. This section still needs to be gathered, but we have 
the remaining quarter marks already pre-gathered. So it's, you can kind of get the concept of this. So, so of course we would gather it in so that it's really nice and snug and fits, fits one to one ratio. And uh, you can get the idea of how it's beginning to become a crossover ruffle top. Now I'm going to show you a close up at the sewing machine. So after we would pin this carefully, then we'd stitch along the gathering lines. Just top stitch the layers. And you almost need to use a stiletto or your sewing machine screwdriver or whatever you'd like to. A seam ripper also works so that you can flatten out the ruffle. And when you top stitch, it will lie flat. So we'll take a one other quick look at our finished crossover tee. And it, it's really graceful. It lies flat. It has accents with the rolled edge. You can have with or without the rolled edge or serge stitch. And it's a clever knockout knit top. Pair it with your jeans or a favorite skirt. This V-neck ruffle top can easily be your go-to pullover. Add the slimming ruffles to a ready-made tee or one you're creating from your favorite knit fabric. I think you get the idea that there are many options when it comes to adding little accents to a knit t-shirt. And Donna, your ruffles this time are narrower. Yes, because they're, they're going down the center front and we wanted to give a slimming visual there, so they are narrower. Also, we also have, again, the rolled hem finishes on both edges of the mm -hmm. two inch strip. And again, we've gathered it close to the neckline and attached it close to the neckline and again down the center front. It's like a big applique. Right. It's, it's top stitched to the one layer of fabric. So to get the center marked, uh, we are starting with a mm -hmm shirt we're making, but you'd fold it in half, press up the hem so you know where the hemline is, and then you have the center and center, and you get the idea. You need to mark the center, and we've already done that with chalk. And then a little measuring. And what we're going to do is we're going to start from the hemline, and we're going to measure all the way around to just the back of the neckline, because that's, if you double that, that's then we, we're at what? 30, 30 inches. Yep, 30 inches will go this way. <laughs> so then it's 60 inches to go all the way around, but then we double that for mm -hmm. our ruffle. So 120 inches of a two inch wide strip. Wh which we cut on crosswise and then did the rolled hem, but also we did overlap um, our seam in the center backs again, so it's really nice and flat. Sure. Now, I don't think we really stress this a lot. I'm just going to make another little point of okay. this, Donna. We're going to cut the two inch strips, the cross grain, so that they have the stretch and the give. And it's the most efficient use of, of fabric, fabric. Uh, yes. as, as well. You're going to do the gathering stitches, the rolled edge. And you don't have to roll the edge. You could just keep right, it Right, you could raw. just yeah. simply cut it. Now on this end, I fold it under after doing the gathering would fold under and stitch a hem so that you'd have a little finish. So, you know, you can add an inch or two if you'd like, want to be exacting. And then we have to quarter mark the shirt. Now, 15 inches is every quarter mark, so you can see we had one pin placed here, so that was a quarter mm -hmm. mark, quarter mm -hmm. mark, really easy just to get those fabrics matching up. And again, at the quarter marks of the gathers, uh, mm -hmm. we started to pull and gather like previous. I know I told you, showed you this last time, but it does make a huge difference when you have over these hundred inches to gather. You can pull one side of the gathering tape to get half of the ruffle, then go to the other. I said gathering tape, but it should be threads. Then you can get the other half, and it just works out so much better. So you pin it down, top stitch along the edges, and it's applied ruffle, you could make it out of different fabric. Right, you could make it out of ribbon, mm -hmm. organza. So when you're thinking of making create, creative adjustments to your t-shirt tops, this might be the option for you. Our next knockout knit top features terraced ruffles. Top stitched onto a rounded neckline, the ruffles and mock placket provide an attractive focal point that has plenty of texture. Now we're going to take ruffles instead of having them asymmetrical or vertical, now horizontal. Right, and we're going to just put it in the yoke area. And these are smaller ruffles, and they're just kind of 
uh, tier, tiered right here on the yoke area. And also we have, you'll find out, kind of a magical tab front there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fake, it's, it's a faux front. We marked in our last segment the center front with chalk. Well, you could also just mark the center front with a press mark, and that's a very common thing to do. And, yeah, and easy, just, yes. easy as well. Yes. Yes. So that's one thing we'll need to mark the center front for, you'll see later, for obvious reasons. And then in the book that accompanies this mm -hmm. program, we do have a little uh, pattern so that you can get the placement of the ruffles right where you want them on the center front. But, you know, necklines may vary. So, right. so right. Donna, you had a good suggestion. Since there's multi-size, you might want to just put uh, a little tuck in the pattern itself and aligning the stitching lines on top of each other so that it will Fit. shape around the neckline because we do want it to be about one inch away from the neckline. Now to mark the lines onto the shirt front, we're just going to place some good old fashioned mm -hmm. tracing, tracing paper. paper. Now on the one side, it has kind of markings that will be transferred. So all you have to do is... It's kind of a little chalky residue that will be perforated onto the t-shirt. And then after you do one side, and I think I missed a row, I'm not sure, then let's see. Oh, don't look at my tracings. <laughs> you're going to do a better job with this when you're doing this, yes. like you did, Donna. Presto. Yes, so we we have, have it marked on both sides. Yes, we do. And so, you know, sometimes I don't do my best sewing on television, but we're not going to tell okay. anybody that. So the width of this ribbon, or it's or ribbon or t-shirt fabric and this we have interlock knit is one and a half inches wide and using the ruffler this is ideal perfect for the yoke ruffle so here on the sample I am creating a tuck or a little ruffle every sixth stitch that's why the little gauge is set at six and you just make yards of ruffles right and then what we're going to do is we want to press that little seam or edge to one side. We want to use the actually the stitching line as our folding down mark. And it's just going to give us kind of a clean edge for when we attach mm -hmm. it to the top. And now we simply arrange our ruffle on the perforated little lines and we'll pin them in place. Okay. And then after we have them pinned in place, what's really nice too about the um, ruffling foot is when you cut the ruffle apart, you don't uh -huh. have to worry about the ruffle falling apart. <laughs> it will stay together. So you can just take it segment by segment. So after and we... This one is my poorly marked one. Here we go. Here's the one that works the best here. It's been stitched following the initial stitching line and then, and then you we'll just press, press it, it down. Press it again down and then we'll again attach our next ruffle. So we'd mark it, match it around. You can see we have four-handed ruffle placement here. Here's a close-up of how you just do the stitching. Straight stitch, about a 2.5, 3.0, 2.5 oh, length and just straight stitch it all the way along following the seam line. And after you've added all your ruffles, now you could add multiple rows, you could add all of the rows that we have marked, or you can maybe just add three. The choice is yours. You're going to have this little terrace effect. And then the placket. Next, we're going to create a, a, a little mm -hmm. tab. And what we have is a perforated interfacing here, and we're going to just fuse it to the wrong side of our, our little tab. And it's going to be cut the width, width of the interfacing. And then we're simply going to press mark each side until we have a completed tab. And then through the, the placement at the center front, you're going to top stitch this down. If you And then add buttons to the front, and there you have a terraced effect.
quilts jumped off the beds and onto the streets in Missoula, Montana, thanks to a collaboration between the Missoula Electric Quilters and the Public Art Committee City Traffic Signal Boxes. Once eyesores are now covered in designed artwork. Kathy Olson and Chris Milo Dragovich join us via Skype to tell us about this unique project. Welcome, Kathy and Chris. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Nancy. Thank you. When I saw a news release about this, I was so intrigued. And Kathy, tell our viewers how traffic signal boxes are now works of art, how that started. Well, everyone has either ground level or pole level signal boxes. And they're large gray boxes mm -hmm. sitting right next to their traffic signals with all the electrical components. And one of our local artists said, gee, we have artwork on our signal boxes in Missouri. And I'm, as a member of the public art committee, brought the idea to our committee and everyone endorsed it, loved it. And so five years ago, we started asking artists and uh -huh. they each receive awards of a thousand dollars we started asking artists to submit designs for our traffic signal boxes so that we could support the artists through our local community and chris your qu quilt group designed the traffic signal box covers that's correct there was a small group of us in missoula who decided to challenge each other to learn the software electric quilt uh -huh. We've been meeting for several months, challenging each other and having a great time doing round robins and group design work. And when the opportunity came to design traffic signal box art, we jumped on it. And like a quilt, your traffic boxes have quilt art, but it's not made of fabric. Tell us about the material that it's printed on. Well, there are two choices for our local traffic signal boxes. And in our case, we chose to do uh, a vinyl wrap. So our mm -hmm. images are digital. We've never made these as quilts <laughs> out of fabric. And the digital image then is printed onto a vinyl material that is adhered to the traffic signal boxes. And you chose the designs very carefully to have representation of Missoula and Montana. Tell us that, about that. That's correct, Nancy. Uh, part of the art call was to reflect images that were specific to Missoula. Mm -hmm. And we are in a valley that has lush wildlife. We're surrounded by mountains and some very iconic sorts of things that local people as well as visitors recognize. Uh, the elk, the deer, mm -hmm. um, and certainly we tried to show those things through the traffic signal box art. Oh, they're very clever. Kathy, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that there's a side benefit to the traffic signal box as being covered in art that I wouldn't have thought about. <laughs> Actually, a mul multiple benefits, some of which are, um, they have been known um, nationwide and worldwide because they are um, many people do them around the world to uh -huh. reduce graffiti in the signal box but even more so there's that traffic calming aspect so people actually <laughs> do slow down and look at the signal boxes and i can't tell you how many wonderful comments that we have received from people throughout um, the world who've traveled to missoula and have appreciated the artwork on the signal boxes so so tell me, Kathy, when, oh, excuse me, uh, Chris, when you were designing these, what were some of the challenges that you had? Well, one of the challenges is that we were newbies in the, learning the software. Sure. So we helped each other in that regard. And another challenge was trying to think outside the box a little bit. <laughs> uh, Literally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are a college town, and... So often, representations of Missoula have to do with the university colors and the mascot. And we mm -hmm. thought, let's let somebody else tackle that. We don't want to include that. So we let that uh, rest and moved on to other things. But we found that what one person in our, our group didn't know, somebody else did. And the emails were flying as we were trying to get our proposal ready to submit to the art committee. We had to put together a scale model Okay. that represented what the traffic signal box would look like uh -huh. on all sides and the top. We had to write art proposals, submit resumes. And for some people on in our group, that was a rather daunting sort of sure. activity. Well, what an incredible 
encouragement to other communities to add quilt art to their community. And I thank you for sharing this with our viewers. And I'm sure, Kathy, you're going to be contacted by other groups. So thanks for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to find out more information about this great project that took place in Missoula, Montana, you can go to nancyzeman.com where you'll find all things Sewing with Nancy. Click under Nancy's Corner and find information. You can also re-watch this television program along with 52 other shows. Well, thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Donna Fenske has written a fully illustrated book entitled Knockout Knit Tops that includes all the information from this series plus a t-shirt pattern by Jay Lee. The book and pattern are $19.98 plus shipping and handling. To order the book and pattern, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2707. Order item number KOKTC, Knockout Knit Tops book and pattern. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.